The tapestry of Gloucester's history is woven with many threads shared by our sister city of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. Few, if any, communities in our respective nations can say that they share in such a legacy as ours. It is a legacy forged in our centuries-long pursuit of the fisheries and tempered by shared tragedies that only fishing communities can truly understand. We are friends, we are rivals, but we are also family. A century has passed since the famous races broadcast to the world the Gloucester-Lunenburg connection, even longer since the first Nova Scotians made their way to fish in the Boston states. Yet the connection remains. The relationships are still there, and just scratching the surface uncovers the shared legacy of the two greatest fishing ports of the Western Hemisphere. Historians still discuss the fishermen's races, sailors still admire our famous schooners, and both communities still play vital roles in our fishing fleet. Glosterites and Lunenburgers are practically cousins, if not actual cousins. You can see it in the shared surnames and the faces along the waterfront. Even today, it's surprising how many Gloucester fishing families still have a little Novi in their blood. The second half of the 19th century saw incredible growth in Gloucester's fisheries, and with this growth came a need for more fishermen to man the fleet. The Gloucester fleet was no stranger to the fishermen of the Maritimes. For decades, the mackerel fleet made their way to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and Gloucester schooners would often head to Lunenburg or Shelburne for bait and dories. Some of these early arrivals were transient fishermen that would return home after a season, hopefully with a little more money for the family back home. By the 1870s, Nova Scotian fishermen were making up more and more of the Gloucester fishing fleet. Gloucester's boom times of the 1880s drew fishermen from far and wide. They arrived on the waterfront ready to man the dories with others destined to take the wheel. It was then that the Nova Scotian fishermen truly made their indelible mark on Gloucester's fishing history. Many of Gloucester's greatest highliners and sail handlers, including the skippers of the international fishermen's races, left their Nova Scotian fishing towns to make a name for themselves during this time. As Gloucester modernized its fleet during and immediately after World War II, its Novi fishermen traded in their schooners and dories for eastern rig draggers and nets. These were the boom years of redfish being sold as ocean perch to the American public and caught in the hundreds of millions of pounds to meet the demand. This ethnic subset of the larger fleet were known for their big draggers and their huge landings, helping Gloucester retake its lead over Boston in fresh fish. As any fishing community will tell you, boom times do not last, but Gloucester fishing endures thanks in part to this rich cultural inheritance. Generational fishing families, a colorful ethnic makeup, and the camaraderie formed from the shared experience still help shape 21st century Gloucester even beyond the waterfront. Before the age of sail came to a close, the 1920s ushered in the international fishermen's races, and with it, a little bit of fame came to Gloucester and Nova Scotia. It was a working class America's Cup, with finely tuned vessels built of solid oak, equally ready to race home from the banks or across the finish line.
Well, the world saw the international fishermen's race as United States versus Canada. For locals, this was definitely Gloucester versus Lunenburg. This was more than just a fishing town versus a fishing town. This was an intimate family affair. Although Boston attempted to compete with their schooner Mayflower, it was an insider's competition all along. For decades, crews of the Gloucester Dory Trawlers were mostly of Nova Scotian or Newfoundland extraction. Many arrived in Gloucester as young men in their teens and now had footholds on both sides of the border. These so-called whitewashed Yankees also made up a majority of Gloucester's best schooner captains. Among them were the skippers of the Gloucester contenders for the International Fisherman's Trophy, Marty Walsh of Elsie, Jeff Thomas of Puritan, and Clayton Morrissey of Henry Ford were all American citizens, but they were originally from Nova Scotia. The only outlier was Ben Pine of Columbia and the Gertrude L. Tebow, and he was a Newfie. Gloucester and Lunenburg don't race their schooners anymore, of course, but we're still competing and challenging each other. Since the 1950s, we've been racing each other in the most humble and yet iconic vessels in the history of the North Atlantic, the Bank Story. Thanks to a fisherman's argument and a Lunenburg bar, our two communities now compete annually using that old workhorse of the schooner days. After the success of the United States Bicentennial Parade of Tall Ships in 1976, traditional sailing vessels captured America's interest once again. This was especially true in New England. As Gloucester saw the rise in party boats for f fishing and for excursions, the public was able to get out on the water in ways other than commercial fishing. Whale watching trips gave people a way to get out on the water of Massachusetts Bay so people of all ages could experience the wonder and majesty of the seas. By 1985, two schooners were offering public charters out of Gloucester. One of these schooners, Morningstar, was owned by two people from Essex who had been in touch with the American Schooners Association about staging a rendezvous with the Nova Scotia Schooner Association. The Cape Ann Chamber of Commerce readily accepted the role of organizer. The plans called for a race between the two schooner associations. The race was won by a Canadian schooner, Fortune. After a tremendously successful first year, a schooner festival was planned again for the following year, but it was to include many more schooners in various sizes and the event was moved to Labor Day weekend. In a few short years, the schooner festival was embedded in the annual calendar as an important reunion of these vessels. For many on Cape Ann, it is a touchstone to the days of the fishing schooner. It serves as a joyous celebration of our maritime heritage, yet the underlying sentiment is a sense of honor and gratitude for they that go down to the sea in ships. Still going strong after 37 years, the Gloucester Schooner Festival, now based at Maritime Gloucester, anticipates the arrival of over two dozen schooners every year Gloucester's favorite rival, the Blue Nose Two, has joined this gam on many occasions. And when she can return again, we will once more be in the company of our favorite friendly rival. The 100th anniversary of the Blue Nose is a cause for great celebration. We here in Gloucester celebrate this year and this important milestone with you. But we also know and understand that our connection to Nova Scotia and Lunenburg in particular goes back even further. These connections will continue to grow as we pass on our shared heritage to the next generation.
When the Blue Nose 2 can come to the Gloucester Schooner Festival, it is a wonderful testament to our shared heritage. While the international fishermen races may have given our port some fame, fame is fleeting. We were, and still are, in possession of something far more valuable and lasting, a shared maritime legacy that remains unrivaled to this day.